If you're a cloud beginner trying to land your first job, remote roles might seem like the perfect opportunity. No commute, total flexibility, and the ability to work from anywhere. But is it really the best choice? Welcome to Cloud Career Mentor, where we help aspiring tech professionals land dream jobs in the cloud industry. I'm your host, Kelly, and today I'm going to break down exactly why remote-only cloud jobs can actually hold you back as a beginner. Because if you try to go remote too soon, you could not only slow down your progress and limit your opportunities, but you could also make getting hired even harder. But don't worry, I'll show you exactly what to do instead to set yourself up for success in the cloud industry. The first reason why going fully remote as a cloud beginner might not be the best move is that remote cloud jobs can actually hide your potential from employers. At the start of your cloud career, one of the biggest challenges you'll face is proving your skills. You know you're putting in the effort learning, practicing, and tackling real-world cloud problems. But how do you show that to your potential employers? Here's the problem. When you're working remotely, your contributions aren't always visible. In an office, your manager sees you problem-solving in real time, stepping up to help a teammate and continuously improving. Even casual moments like mentioning a new AWS service you're studying can leave a lasting impression. Suddenly, they see you as someone eager to grow. But when you're in a remote setup, those organic moments disappear. No one sees you staying late to troubleshoot an issue. No one notices the extra effort you put into refining documentation or optimizing a workflow. You become just another name in a Slack channel, blending in with everyone else. And here's the harsh truth. Managers tend to promote and invest in the people they see making progress. When it's time to assign key projects or discuss promotions, they'll think of the person they've seen actively contributing not the one they barely interact with. If your goal is to accelerate your cloud career, visibility matters. You need to stand out, and that's a lot harder to do when you're hidden behind a screen. Please drop a like on this video if you think it resonates and share your experience in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. The second risk of starting your cloud career in a fully remote role is the risk of developing bad work habits. Let's be real. Learning cloud computing is already a challenge. There's a lot to figure out, and without structure, it's easy to lose focus or waste time. That's why having a solid work structure is so important when you're starting out. In an office, structure is built into your day. You have a start time, scheduled meetings, and a focused environment. Even quick check-ins from teammates or managers, they help you keep on track. But when you're remote, that structure disappears. No one is checking in on you. No one is reminding you to stay on task or take breaks. This lack of structure leads to some cloud beginners struggling with distractions. Without anyone watching, it's easy to procrastinate, jumping between too many learning resources, scrolling social media, or convincing yourself you'll get serious later. Before you know it, hours are gone and you've made no real progress. On the other hand, some cloud beginners push too hard. They feel like they need to be available 24-7 to prove themselves. They skip breaks, work late into the night, and overcommit, and then burnout. Without structure, remote work can make it harder to stay productive, focused, and balanced. And as a cloud beginner, if you're struggling to build strong work habits from the start, you could be holding yourself back from the very opportunities that will help you grow. But here's the thing. There are still three more reasons why remote-only roles can hold you back as a cloud beginner. It's important for you to know what these reasons are because they could mean the difference between years of struggle and a fast-growing cloud career. But before we get into that, I want you to check out a free guide we put together called The Three Simple Steps to Your First Cloud Job. In this guide, we break down a simple, proven formula that will help you land your first cloud job faster and with less frustration. If you're serious about starting your cloud career, you don't want to miss this. 
Grab your free copy now. The link is in the description below. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more tips to help you succeed in cloud. Now, let's jump back into the video. The third reason why you shouldn't apply for remote only jobs as a cloud beginner is because they are way more competitive and harder to get than location-based roles. Think about it. If you apply for a job in your city, whether it's London, New York, or anywhere else, you're only competing with other applicants in that area. But when you apply for a remote-only job, you're competing with candidates from all over the world. This drastically increases the number of applicants, making it much harder for you to stand out. And here's the real challenge. Many of those candidates have years of experience, stronger portfolios, and proven track records in cloud computing. Some may even be willing to work for lower salaries, especially if they're based in regions with lower living costs. Others might be open to working longer hours or have previous remote work experience, which makes them even more attractive to employers. So don't make your job search harder than it needs to be. Focus on landing a local role first, develop your expertise, and let remote work become a natural step in your career. The fourth reason why remote-only jobs aren't the best choice for tech beginners is that working in location-based jobs will help you grow faster in your career, especially in the beginning of your cloud career. If you start your cloud career in an office, you'll learn faster and grow quicker. And that's because of the people around you. As a junior team member, you'll have direct access to senior cloud engineers who can mentor you, answer your questions, and guide you through real-world challenges. This kind of mentorship is crucial because it shortens your learning curve, helps you improve your skills faster, and ultimately leads to better opportunities like pay raises and promotions. When you're working remotely, getting that same level of mentorship is much harder. You don't have the luxury of turning to a teammate for a quick explanation or watching how experienced engineers solve problems in real time. Instead, you're often left figuring things out on your own, which can slow down your progress and make learning cloud skills feel overwhelming. Beyond just learning, working in an office makes tech feel less isolating. Tech jobs, especially cloud roles, can sometimes feel lonely when you're working from home every day. But in an office, you naturally bond with your team, whether it's through casual coffee breaks, grabbing lunch together, or just sharing small wins throughout the day. These moments build trust and camaraderie, making your work more enjoyable and creating a support system when you need help. And that support is invaluable. When you have strong relationships with your team, they'll be more patient with you as you learn, more willing to help when you're stuck, and more likely to advocate for your success. As a junior cloud engineer, you'll need all the support you can get. And being in an office, make sure you get it. The final reason why a remote-only cloud job can hold you back as a beginner is that most remote cloud jobs are short-term or contract-based. This is something most cloud beginners don't realize, but it's one of the biggest downsides of remote-only cloud jobs. Most remote cloud jobs aren't full-time permanent positions. Instead, they're short-term contracts, freelance gigs, or temporary roles. That means no job security, no health benefits, and no paid time off. For a cloud beginner, this can be risky. You need stability, somewhere you can gain real experience, work on long-term projects, and get mentorship from experienced engineers. But if you're jumping from one short-term contract to another, you're constantly in job search mode. Instead of focusing on learning and growing, you're worried about where your next paycheck is coming from. Then there's the risk of layoffs. When companies need to cut costs, guess which positions they eliminate first? Contract and remote roles. If you're in a short-term remote job with no long-term commitment from the company, you're much more vulnerable to being let go at any time. What you really need as a cloud beginner is time. Time to develop your skills, make mistakes, learn from them, and build confidence. A stable full-time position gives you that foundation, something that's much harder to find in the unpredictable world of remote-only, contract-based cloud jobs. Listen, 
The truth is that getting a job in the cloud industry can be really challenging. That's exactly why cloudcareermentor.com exists. In this program, you'll get access to a well-structured, beginner-friendly program designed to help you gain the hands-on experience that employers are really looking for. You'll learn in-demand cloud skills like Linux, AWS, Git, Terraform, and CI CD pipelines, all while working on real-world projects that showcase your abilities to recruiters. We'll also teach you how to turn those projects into a resume that stands out, ace your interviews, and confidently prove your skills, something that's much harder to do in a remote first role, where you're just starting out. And the best part? You won't have to figure it all out alone. With personalized mentorship, a structured learning path, and a supportive community, you'll have everything you need to succeed. So, before diving into a remote-only cloud job, set yourself up for success first. Check out cloudcareermentor.com to learn more. I want you to imagine it's a year from now. You're not stuck in an endless cycle of job applications and rejection. Instead, you have developed the skills employers are looking for and are now employed, working alongside experts and building the confidence to tackle complex cloud challenges head on. That's the difference between jumping into a remote role too soon and setting yourself up for long-term success. The fastest way to grow in the cloud isn't isolation, it's immersion. Surrounding yourself with the right mentorship, real-world exposure, and structured learning will take your skills to the next level, faster than you ever thought possible. And here's the best part. Once you've built that solid foundation, remote jobs won't feel like a struggle. They'll feel like a natural next step. Because by then, you won't be second guessing yourself. You'll know exactly what to do. So don't rush into remote cloud roles just yet. Play the long game, gain the experience now, and the freedom will follow. I hope I've been able to convince you that applying for remote-only roles might not be the best strategy to break into the cloud industry. Applying for cloud roles in your town or city might be the best way to improve your chances and land that dream job. If you're wondering when the right time is to break into cloud tech, this year might just be the perfect year to do it. With the demand for cloud professionals skyrocketing and new opportunities opening up, there's never been a better time to get started. Check out the video called Why 2025 is the perfect year to get a cloud tech job. It'll walk you through the latest trends, hiring demand, and how you can position yourself to land your first cloud role. I'll see you in the next video.